Hey DIY wires, Dylan here with Alarm Grid. Today we are going to be talking about how to wire in a GSM X 4G uh, communicator. Now we have a model here. This is not the GSM X 4G. This is a uh, LTE XV. Uh, this is a Verizon module. It's one of the newer Verizon modules it's on LTE network. The wiring is exactly the same for this and the other module. Uh, so we'll be just using this as an example today. Uh, just keep in mind that this is the LTE X4G, the Verizon LTE communicator, while the GSM X4G is an AT&T 4G communicator. So to start, uh, the communicator uh, gets its power from 4-wire ECP connection. Uh, most of the time when you're doing these installs, it's going to draw power directly from the panel from the ECP bus terminals right there. Uh, those buses are 5 through 6. So five, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, four, four through seven, actually, sorry. Uh, so for the wiring, uh, I'm going to begin to actually how to wire it a little bit later on. I just want to talk about more of the uh, communicator in the meantime. So as mentioned, most of the time you're going to be doing the wiring directly to the panel. Uh, sometimes if the panel has too much power being drawn from it already, this will not be able to get the proper power it needs to operate. The operating voltage is about, uh, let's see, it is about 12 VDC for this. So if the panel is getting too much power drawn from it, uh, another way you can set this up is by using a 24-hour backup battery as well to provide power to the communicator. Uh, so for the communicator, if you're going to wire it into the battery, you're going to have to have the ground be common for both the panel as well as the battery. Uh, so that's usually the black wire right here. Uh, and then that way you can get the proper power it needs if, of course, the panel cannot provide the proper voltage. So the operating current for the communicator is about 65 me uh, milliamps just on standby. So when it's not sending out signal, when it's not receiving anything, when it's kind of just sitting there, about 65 milliamps. Uh, when it does actually send out signal, it's going to be operating about 250 milliamps. So that's it either sending out a signal or receiving a signal. So there are a couple features about the communicator I want to talk about. First, uh, the communicator does have a flip open cover, so it's consistently connected to the communicator, you can't lose the cover or anything, um, flips right up, exposes the inside. As you can see here, we have the Verizon uh, SIM card, since this is the LTXV. Uh, if you had the GSM module, that'd be the at t SIM card. So right here, we've already connected our power wires into the ports on the panel, well on the communicator, comes with a very, very simple connection, very easy. Just plugs right in there, and then you're good to go. And then obviously the rest of the wires you're going to feed through the little connector right there, which will be connecting to the top of the panel. Uh, basically has like a little screw where you can tighten this in, feed the wires through so it's not exposed, it's not you know looking too bad, you can't really see any of it. And then obviously once you start wiring into the panel, it's a lot easier if it's just going directly through it. So with this, there's also no tamper button. Uh, so that is a bit of a downside. So no tamper button means that if this is ever opened, the panel will not alert you. Uh, if you have ever opened like a sensor, a keypad, um, the panel itself sometimes even, or like with some of the older communicators, IGSM V4G, GSM 4G, so on and so forth, uh, it will trigger a tamper on your keypads. You'll start to hear a beeping, and then you'll be getting an alert, you know, saying check tamper, tamper cover for this, tamper cover for that. This will not tell you that. It does have a button in the bottom left-hand corner right here. That's usually what a tamper button would look like. However, that is not a tamper button. That's a registration button. Uh, you can register the communicator by pressing that about three times. It's not really recommended for that one. Usually, we just have the actual dealers do the registration from their end. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So, the communicator does have a built-in antenna, which is right here. There are options for external antenna as well. So if you're not getting the proper signal strength from where this is uh, installed, you can always get a external antenna wired in as well. There's more information about that in the actual user in, in install guides. So I would recommend just reviewing that if you want to do external antennas. Okay, so a couple things we'll do now is first we'll do wiring. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is make sure that this can get proper signal. So to do that, we're gonna first power down our Vista. I'm using the LT cable to power on the Vista. We do sell this cable, it's just for easy install. It has a barrel connection right here, which powers into the 
uh, terminals on the actual Vista. So to unplug it, simply just unplug that. My Vista is dead, no more power. As you can see, I don't have a backup battery or anything installed, so I know that that was my only power source. So what we're gonna do, try to do this from where I'm standing. So we're gonna wire in the red and the black wires. Those are the power wires for the communicator and we're gonna wire them into terminal five for red and then terminal four for black. So we'll start with black, our ground, and that is terminal four, excuse me for getting in the way. Got that there. Wire that in. Okay, nice and secure. And then we're gonna do our red wire, which is our auxiliary wire. And that is going to terminal number five, so right next door. Just make sure we have our connection straight on here so it gets nice and secure. Once again, excuse me for getting in the way. Pop that in there. It's not too easy doing it from behind, but. Should be good, nice and secure. Give them all a yank. All right, perfect. So now that I have my power connections into the Vista, I'm gonna power the Vista back on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for these LEDs right here to stop on the signal and just show us that the signal is okay. So the indication that signal is okay is that it's just gonna stay green, uh, it will stay lit, it's gonna cycle through at first. And then basically the reason that you wanna do this first, uh, so as you see, we did not connect the data wires. The power wires, it's basically just having the communicator itself test the signal. So if that signal never lights up where it doesn't stay green, we know there's no signal here, there's no point in installing this. It's just gonna be a waste of time, do a lot of work for nothing. Um, we need this to show that we have good signal before we proceed. Now this can take about a you know a minute, two minutes, um, just for the sake of timing in the video. I've already installed this communicator before, I do know that it can do signal, we've tested it before. So in this case, we're just gonna, you know, Go ahead, we're gonna say the signal is good, it's shown good. I'm gonna power the system back off, again with the LT cable, just simply unplug it. System powered off, LEDs are killed. <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do is wire in the data connection. So this is gonna be how the communicator is gonna work with the panel and how it's gonna communicate with us, alarm dealers. So for that, we are gonna be doing the yellow cord uh, the yellow wire into terminal seven for data out. And then the green cord, we're gonna do terminal six for data in. So let's go ahead and get that done. Let's start with green, terminal six. Make sure my connection's good. Uh, let's see. Just undo that real quick, get our connection good that up there. Tighten it back up, get our connection. And then finally, yellow. Once again, yellow is going into data out, which is terminal seven, right next door. that in there and then let's tighten that back up make sure connections good all right so again just give them a little tug make sure they're nice and secure everything's secure we're good to go so we're going to start off by powering this on now actually before i power it on i just want to review what the leds will do so uh, i'm going to go top to bottom so top, our REG, which is the registration, that is a green colored LED. So when it is on, it means that the panel is, not the panel, but the communicator is not registered. Uh, when it is off, so when you do not see an LED on that, it means the panel is registered. If it's doing a fast blink, it means that there is a download in progress. What that means is that uh, someone remotely, your alarm dealer, 
is connecting into the panel through a program called Compass. It's basically a programming software. Uh, so that's what that means. It just means someone's connecting through Compass to do some programming remotely. Uh, a slow, brink, uh, slow blink excuse me, is registration in progress. So when you do contact your alarm dealer and when you're setting this up with them, during the registration, you're going to see that do a slow blink. Uh, the next one, the TX slash RX, that is your transmission. Uh, that is going to be a consistent yellow. So when that is on, it means that transmission is pending, waiting to either be sent out or received. A periodic blink, uh, so kind of like a heartbeat. So that's just meaning it's normal, it's functioning fine. You're going to see it blink as often as, you know, once every couple seconds. It's going to be consistent, that's fine. Uh, for a fast blink, that means a message is waiting. And for a slow blink, as well as, as I mentioned before with the registration, a slow blink on this means the registration is in progress. So you will see both the REG and the TX slash RX lights do a slow blink uh, during the registration, just showing that everything is going through and it's waiting to finish. Uh, the next one, our fault, that is going to be a red LED. So when that is on, that means there is no contact with the network so the communicator is still functioning with the panel, but it's not uh, talking to us. It's not talking to AlarmNet 360, which is the Honeywell servers that we register these to. Uh, if it is off, that is normal. So if there's no red LED, you're good, no issues. If it's doing a slow blink, that means there's a loss of communication. What that means is that it's still communicating with AlarmNet, but it's not communicating with the panel. Uh, so that is basically just something that you gotta make sure your connections are good. Uh, for the fast blink, it means there is no contact with the network as well as a loss of communication. So it's just not talking to anyone. It's not talking to the panel. It's not talking to the uh, alarm net servers. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. Uh, again, that's something you have to figure out with your alarm company for the registration process, of course, because they can see signal strength. And then for communicating with the panel, that's usually your data wires. Most of the time what we see, very, very simple issue people will swap the red, and, uh, I'm sorry, the yellow and the green. So they'll put green to data out and then yellow to data in. Uh, that happens quite often, usually with like the IGSM V4G communicators. Um, but same idea here. If it's not communicating, more than likely it's those data wires. Let's see, so right here are a signal that is gonna be a green LED. When that is just on, it's showing minimal signal strength. Uh, if it is blinking, it's showing marginal signal strength. And if it's off, it means that the signal, I'm sorry, the installation is not recommended. So as I mentioned before, when we had just connected the power wires and we were waiting for it to cycle, uh, if that did not light up, then that means we don't have signal. And finally, if all the LEDs are blinking when you wire this up, just consistently blinking, that means there is a hardware issue either with the panel or the communicator. You just have to troubleshoot that and possibly replace one or the other. Okay. <clears throat> So now that that is all out of the way, let's go ahead and power this back up. So while this is powering back up, I mean, that's essentially all the wiring right there. It's very, very simple to wire these in, especially because it comes with that pre-built connector right there. I mean, that's very, very simple. It's very, very helpful. Uh, for other communicators, you would have to wire in to the communicator as you did the panel. So each connection that's usually where those data issues come from because people will always get confused. They'll do data in to data in, data out to data out. Uh, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, we've already messed around with this communicator before, so I do know that it's registered. Um, as the end user, you're going to have to contact your alarm dealer. So either by phone, uh, by sign-up, email, however they work, you're going to contact them. You're going to give them the information off the communicator. So that's going to be the MAC address right there, such as 00D0, and then the MAC CRC, the 4F24. Obviously, all the codes will be different for other communicators. This is tied up to our servers. Uh, so once they have that information, they're going to start registering the, the product. Uh, if they do come across any issues, obviously, they can tell you uh, or do it for you, depending on you know if it's DIY or if they're actually coming out. Uh, they can change a couple settings with a keypad for the Vista, get that communicating, and then get it registered. That is pretty much everything I have to say about the communicator. Uh, if you did want to learn more about it and see more wiring videos, learn more about registration, sign up for monitoring, or anything like that, uh, you can check out our website, www.alarmgrid.com. And if you did like this video, if you thought it was helpful, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the uh, bell icon down there to be notified when we actually release the videos. 
Uh, okay, well, thank you guys very much and have a great day.